These have to be the world's two favorite soups. You see it everywhere. Oh, is ramen better or is pho better? We're here to find out. Hello, don't you forget, we got Papa Tapa, boom, still available, limited time only. Go get it, link in the description. So today we are doing pho versus ramen. If someone were to ask me this question, which they have many times, I usually feel like, well, it depends on the mood, depends on the vibe, right? But I've never really sat down and had them side by side. So we're gonna make two incredible versions, put them head to head to find out who the real winner is. So let's make this, shall we? Okay, in the far side of the ring, we have pho. Wow, look at the form. The fragrance emanating from deep within. And in the other corner of the ring, we have a miso tonkotsu ramen, thick and rich, just how I like them, Josh. Oh, hey, me too, Josh. By the way, you look great today. Hey, thanks. <clears throat> right, let's begin with pho. Before you start whining, this is actually a very easy process. It just takes a while. So let's make it simple. First, you brown and char your bones. This eliminates the need to parboil and enriches the broth flavor. Preheat your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Sheet tray, line with foil, coat with vegetable oil. Lay out five pounds or 2.2 kilograms of beef bones. A good mix of knuckle and marrow with a fair bit of meat left in the bone is ideal. Spray your drizzle those with a little bit more oil to coat evenly. Place in your oven for 20 to 30 minutes or until deeply browned. On a separate baking sheet, ideally a quarter sheet, line with foil, add two large onions, cut in half with their skin left on, leaving their cut side facing up. One large nub of ginger, sliced in half widthwise to expose the inside. Nicely. Cut side facing up, coat those with oil, pop into the broiler until deeply charred on the outside. As for your spices, I like to use what's called a sachet. This is basically gonna be your little sack of fragrance. For your broth, get a 5 by 5 inch square of cheesecloth. You may need multiple layers of it. Add in 5 star anise, 3 black cardamom pods, 5 cloves, a third cup or 22 grams of toasted coriander seeds, 1 cinnamon stick, gather up all the ends, forming a sack, tie off the top, and make sure to close your sack tightly. Please, keep the mind out of the gutter. Separately, you'll need a 1 pound or 450 gram chuck roast. Boneless. So get a 10 inch pan, set over medium high heat, add just enough vegetable oil to coat the bottom, and sear your beef on both sides for 2-3 to three minutes per side to get a beautiful brownie that will surely bring all the homies to the yard. Now, ideally, you'll do this in the same pot that you're cooking in, but ours was preoccupied at the time. Speaking of the pot, you'll need one that's at least 8 to 10 quarts. Fill that up with your brown beefy boys. All of your nice charred vegetables. Yes, the charred skins and all. Don't be afraid of flavor, all right, sweaty? Then add in just enough cold filtered water to cover, around 5 quarts or 5 liters. Toss in your sachet, ah oui, bonjour. One and a half tablespoons of light brown sugar and your seared chuck roast. Obviously, if you had done that in the same pot, then it would already be in there, but yeah. Oh, and don't you worry, I saved the fawn from the pan that I seared the beef in. Anyway, heat that to medium high and as soon as it starts to come to a boil, reduce the heat to low and simmer that bad boy for about four hours. The first 30 minutes, be sure to skim any scum that rises to the top, and once that's cooked down, taste and reduce further if it's not quite as rich tasting as it should be. Then carefully fish out the majority of the solids, but reserve the chuck roast in as single of a piece as you can, then strain it into a slightly smaller pot to keep everything hot, add in a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of fish sauce, stir and adjust the fish sauce levels as desired. So that's it, we're almost ready to serve by now. Now all that's left is cook eight ounces or 227 grams of rice noodles in boiling water according to the package direction you know, like a al dente. Strain and rinse with cold water until completely cold. I want them things shivering their timbers. Add a nice amount of your noodles into a large bowl. Separately, you'll slice one pound or 450 grams of flank stick as thinly as you can. You might have heard it, freezing the meat helps with getting it thin, but you know what else helps get it thin? A sharp knife. Yeah, wouldn't have to do all that waiting if your knife was just sharp. Oh, haha, ha, Josh, so silly. I don't have a sharp knife. Why not? You hurt me every day. Anyway, add a nice handful of your sliced raw beef to the bowl and stay calm here. Some very thinly sliced sweet onion, then ladle in your boiling hot broth over the veg and meat and look at that. If your broth is properly heated, then it'll cook the beef beautifully while contributing some of its own flavor to said broth. Add some mung bean sprouts, which I hate, but I'm putting them in there anyway for those who like them, all right? Papa still loves you. Top with fresh cilantro, albeit sacrilegious, maybe some Thai basil because I like it, some sliced chili if you want it spicy, and simply serve with lime wedges, fish sauce, and hoisin on the side. That's Pho. Now, let's talk about an easier tonkotsu. There's no way around it. Ramen has a lot more elements to it. So we'll run through them quickly. First, chashu. Get a three pound or 1.3 kilogram piece of pork belly, roll it up nice and doit, tie it off with some kitchen twine at three intervals to maintain its shape. Get a seven to eight quart heavy bottom pot, add enough oil to coat the bottom, heat to medium high until so hot I'll slap my knee till the god dang dog comes through the wrong door again. Add your pork and sear for one to two minutes per side to get some light browning for that extra meat. 
Take the bad boy out. Add in a mix of the following. A two inch piece of fresh ginger, peeled and rough chopped. Five green onion, cut into one inch segments. One shallot, peeled and halved. Yes, you can leave the skin on, it's all good. Fold that with one cup or 240 milliliters of sake. One cup or 240 milliliters of mirin. Three quarters of a cup or 180 milliliters of good quality shoyu. One cup or 240 milliliters of water. And a quarter cup or 56 grams of granulated sugar. Oh, and you know, you can't forget some of the stuff that spilled out on your mise en place tray, am I right? It's got that flight. Heat to medium high. Until it comes to a boil, reduce to low, add in your chashu, and simmer, covered, turning occasionally for two and a half hours or until you have a beautiful hunk of belly. Now you can totally slice this now and use it immediately, but I personally like to chill it completely to get cleaner cuts and sear the individual pieces more efficiently. Up to you, pal. Live your life. Next, tare. Medium sauce pot. A quarter cup or 60 milliliters of sake. Set to medium high. Boil until half reduced. Reduce the heat to medium. Then add half a cup or 118 milliliters of mirin. Half a cup or 120 milliliters of aged soy sauce. A quarter cup or 60 milliliters of shiradashi. And once that reaches a steamy heat, but no boiling. Add in one cup or 13 grams of bonito flakes. Cut off the heat and let that steep for 10 minutes. Then strain that through a mesh strainer and you have a tare that smells like a fresh campfire in the middle of a soy sauce aging chamber. That sound good, pal? All right, when it comes to homemade ramen, a lot of people skip the aroma oil, and I've learned that it's really non-negotiable. I mean, look, if you're gonna spend the time to make this, don't stop at the aroma oil. Please, you might as well just stop in totality. I don't know, go toot somewhere. Sauce pan down. Medium heat, add a half cup or 103 grams of lard. Oh, I wanna use vegetable oil, but I did that. Stop. This is important to contribute to that pork flavor of the broth, as opposed to what vegetable oil brings to the table flavor-wise. Uh, I'll give you a hint, it's nothing. Once that's hot and melted, add in one bunch of green onions, cut into one-inch segments, and eight garlic cloves, peel and left whole. Let that cook stirring often at medium heat till the vegetables are toasted nicely and it smells absolutely magnificent, bruv. Strain all the veg out and stir in one teaspoon or five grams of toasted sesame oil. Mix until combined and that's nice. As for the ramen eggs, look, I'm fine with marinated eggs. But to be honest, kind of prefer regular soft-boiled eggs. But you can totally marinate these if you wish. But I get so many questions. Josh, how do you make your soft-boiled eggs? Making a soft-boiled egg is not some ethereal talent. It's literally boiling water, eggs put in there for six minutes, ice bath until warm, peel under running water or a water bath, and voila, guess what? That's it. The main concern is the egg can sense your fear. Remember that. Okay, that leads us to broth. I've got good news. You do not need to overnight boil this specific broth. I got a little bit of a hack for you. So, pot down. Add in two pounds or 900 grams of pork neck bones, two and a half pounds or 1.1 kilos of sliced pork hocks with an H. Add in just enough cold filtered water to cover, set to medium high, and once it comes to a boil, strain into a colander, rinse off your bones, then add all those rinsed bones to a pressure cooker or instant pot. This reason alone is worth investing in one. Add in just enough cold filtered water to cover, making sure not to pass up that fill line, cover and set to high pressure for one and a half hours, release the pressure then add in half a pound or 227 grams of solid pork fat back. That's not lard, that's pork fat back. Unrendered. If you put rendered pork fat, it'll just melt in there. It's not gonna do what you want. Cover again and set to high pressure for another one and a half hours. Then release the pressure. Oh my God, Josh, it's not queeny. Stay calm. We have enough gelatin in this thing to emulsify a god dang swimming pool. Carefully fish out that pork fat back. Place it in a blender with about a pint of the hot broth. Please make sure there's no bones in it unless you want to say goodbye to your blender and blend on high speed for about 30 to 45 seconds or until the mixture is beautifully creamy and emulsified. Now strain your broth that hasn't been emulsified into a medium sized stock pot, then add in your emulsified broth to that, set it under a stove over medium high, add in one bunch of green onion, cut into one inch segments, five cloves of garlic peeled left whole, a one inch knob of ginger sliced, bring to a boil, then reduce the heat to low and reduce for 25 minutes. Once that's done, strain out the veg, and finally whisk in half a cup or 75 grams of red miso, quarter cup or 41 grams of white miso, bing bang, miso tonkotsu ramen broth. Put your nose against the screen. Is that nice? What are some notes you're picking up off of that? Let us know in the comments. All right, we're finally here. Let's assemble this bag. Bad boy. Cut the stems off one pound of beach mushrooms. Heat a 12-inch skillet with enough vegetable oil to coat the bottom of the pan. Add in your mushrooms, season to taste with salt, and saute for five minutes or until soft and lightly brown. Cut your oof in half, slice up some green onion, and bowl up in this order. About two and a half tablespoons of your tare in the bottom. One to two strong ladlefuls of your ramen broth. Straight ramen noodles that have been cooked and cooled according to package directions. A nice heap of your mushrooms. One to two beautiful slices of your pork belly that have been torched or broiled until lightly charred and hot. Some fresh, thinly sliced green onion. A soft boiled egg half, your aromatic oil drizzled lovingly atop, and finally some nori strips if you vibe like that. Now we have two kings of kings, pho and ramen. I'd be lying if I said I could barely speak because my mouth is wetter than the water and hole down south. Either that or I'm nervous which way this is going to go because look, th these are my two favorites. So let's taste test and find out who our winner will be. Ah, here we are. Two of my favorite soups, dare I say just dishes in general. First off, pho. All right, mix that up. Oh, oh, I mean, it's good. Salty, sweet, sour. You got the chewy from the nudes. It's such like a healing broth. It just feels good to eat. Now moving on to ramen. I mean, this stuff is creamy. 
This is tough. I'm gonna categorize these. Pho is the ideal choice for daily eating, right? It's not that heavy. You can kind of eat it whenever you want. It feels good. You can walk away with energy. This, this is like a full on experience. There's so much flavor and it's like, punching you in the face. So this is my personal favorite, but I think that they're both winners depending on what your eating style is. If you wanna eat this stuff regularly more often, you're gonna to wanna to pick this, but if you want a full on experience, like once a week or whenever, whenever, ramen will always fulfill you. There's a soup for every person. But do you wanna know what else is for every person? B-roll.